In this tutorial, I want to show you how to create a micro interaction to in text input element. It's super small, but it's super cute, and it's adding a lot to the uh, experience or to the smoothness of, of your website. So this is a single input element, and as I focus it, you can see that the label is uh, going up and, and also uh, getting smaller a bit and then if i add some value and i'm um, going out from this input it stays the same but if this become empty it will go back to its position all right super cute and small and i'll show you how you can create so let's jump right into the editor so this is a single input element uh, you need to turn on dev mode for it and then you can go to the add panel add input element I choose this style and adopt it a bit um, so I did because uh, uh, because I don't want the background to cover my text so I make it transparent and the border I choose the bottom one put um, two pixels uh, width of the bottom border and change the uh, border color to black something like this and I also adjust uh, the hover and focus or uh, all the other states um, and also I removed this um, input and placeholder uh, spacing you see it's uh, if we add a placeholder for example this is text so it's this one, of course you can change the color of the placeholder, let's make it also black. And then this is the layout, you can, this is what I removed, okay, so it's aligned with the label. Alright, so let's get rid of this input, oh, and you can always uh, match the design by copy element design and paste it, and then they are identical. Alright, so this is the input we are working on. So we combine a CSS with Velo, okay? So first of all, after you toggle on the, the dev mode, the first thing in, we need to do is to give some custom, um, a custom class to this input, okay? So by default, um, your window will be, when you open dev mode and select an element, it, it will be selected on properties and events, you can switch to CSS classes and immediately you can see that I have my own uh, custom class I called it my form text input all right it's just for us to be able now to see what we are doing but later I will remove it all right so this is my CSS okay you can see right here that I can um, I can select the text input uh, wrapper I can select the, the text input uh, input which is this field and the label which is this one we are going to work on the label so as you can see right here I have here my prefix of my class class uh, my my selector and then I have this um, uh, class that is uh, work with with a uh, Wix element all right so it's the text input um, label so the first thing we are doing we are removing kind of this label from the structure of the element so we changing its position to absolute okay and we add in transition transition is basically this um, smoothness of the, uh, the transition of the element from specific position to a different one and scale the text down and we are setting the font size here specifically I'm setting the font size as I like also although I can select it right from here I can set it right from here this is the you can see that the input text is 18 pixels and this is I think it's important that the label um, font size and the input 
uh, font size will be identical because after all you are what well, this is uh, demonstrate like a value right so as you click on it the new value the user will enter is should be this is my opinion it should be same size as as this state okay the initial state all right um, so we're setting the font size okay actually I'm not sure that you have to do it because it should take the default from here but right, let's test it but this is super important this is the top okay this is how much okay this is the uh, in the editor this is the initial state right so it says how much we push the button from top to be aligned with the placeholder content or the input content this should be straight so this value you can play around with it and then you can you can see that the label is aligned with with your placeholder content um, another way to do it is let me um, let me comment out this code so it won't be run and I'll add the class okay I have the class great okay so then let's publish it just for a second sorry I need to add I need to add some content so let's put uh, same value first name I want it to be identical so I can align this label exactly right here okay so right now let's keep it let's make it uh, uh, 20 pixels just so you can see the difference let's publish the site and then you can see that they they are not aligned right so when I put 37 this is something I test before So now they are, they are almost identical in same. Uh, the label is right in the center. Okay. So what we are doing basically, we won't have a placeholder in our input, but instead of the placeholder, we will we'll have here the label. So as I, as we focus this input, the label will go up. Okay. Uh, so this is the animation we are trying to do so this is important you should play around with it to make this label right in in where it should be and then we have a uh, same selector you see text input label but we have um, a different class okay a focused this is focus state so as we focus this input we want to add dynamically this class Okay, so let's remove the placeholder because we don't need it. So we already see that this label is going to, to the right place, place. And later we will talk about how you can adjust it to a different breakpoint. So let's see what the function is doing. So right now my function is called init form input micro interaction. All right. Um, so what this function does, basically it's selecting all the inputs but this is uh, selecting all the inputs that you have in your page alternatively if you don't want to do it you can do something else you can declare all inputs and instead of uh, as you can see it's dollar w and then without asterisk uh, so it's selecting all the inputs so instead you can put everything in array and then select the input id and and do something like this so if you, if you have another element you just add it to the array okay so it's go all it's go for each input all right so let's let's continue it that way for now um, so for all inputs right now I have only one what we are doing for each input if the input placeholder is empty because it's not make sense to shift the label right in the middle when we have already content for the placeholder so we don't want to apply this effect 
So if the placeholder is empty and input class list, uh, sorry, uh, if this is true, so go to that input and add class, this class, okay? This is the first step. First of all, we are adding all these classes to our input. So now I removed this class from, from here. The second thing we are doing, we said, when we focus the input, we want to apply the animation, right? So we, we, do, we do only one thing. We take in the input, we add in a class called focus, focused to this input. We, what, we, what this class doing is changing the font size for 14 pixels. You, ca you don't have to do it. You can keep the same font size. And it shifts it to the top, okay? So it's, if in the initial state, this one, we push the label 37 from the top, so as it focus, when it gets focused, we remove it. So we, sh we switch it, uh, we change it back to zero, and then it go back to its original position, all right? Um, and when it's blurred, I mean, when the focus is outside of this input, so we check in if the input value trim is removing the white space, okay? That the if you click uh, like this spaces, okay? So if the input value without extra spaces, the its length is equal to nothing, okay? Which means it's empty. So we're removing the focus and then it's going back, uh, back down to its original position based on the class we add to it, all right? So I, I want just to remove the font size so uh, so we can see how it's working. So right now, as you can see, the label is in the middle, and as we click to focus the input, it's going up. So right now, it's keep exactly same font size, but I thought it would be nicer to make it even smaller. So I change it to 14 pixels. Alternatively, you can do a lot of stuff, right? But for this example, uh, I'm doing this tiny micro interaction. So right now, if I'm uh, fo focusing this input, so this label is going up and also shrink down to 14 pixels, all right? So now let's see what we can do for different breakpoints. Of course, you can. I can go to tablet and mobile, but I'll jump right to the mobile immediately, okay? Because in mobile, I think you can maybe have a different height for your input. And now let's see, we did this small adjustment and, of, and maybe we want to change um, the label font size to be 16 pixels, something like this, okay? So now you can see that everything is not working as it should be, okay? Because we change the values, so Let's go to the mobile. Now you can see it's it's smaller, okay? But as I click, you can see it's not, it's, it's going too down, okay? This input, you can see that the, the new value that I'm putting is not at the same, uh, at the same place, okay? You can say that this is good or not good, but I prefer to be more precise. So what can I do? I can play around, um, sorry. I added a media query that, uh, that says the maximum width is 1000 pixels just before tablet. And this code will run only for this screen width, okay? So what we can do, we can simply take in the focus state, sorry, not the focus state, the, uh, the the initial state that we are pushing the element from top, okay? And I can paste it right here. But I don't want to make any changes to the transition or to the position, so let's remove it. I only want to change the top value, okay? So let's change it to, I don't know, 17. 
So now because we are in mobile, it should be, as you can see, now it's not going all the way down, but it's still not precise. So you can play around with it more or you can go to the inspect. Uh, you can do it by right click, inspect, and then you can select the element from here. And then it's a bit tricky, but you can see here there is a label, so you can select it. And then you can play around with the top value, okay? So now I can do something like this. Uh, it's 26 right now, okay? So it looks almost perfect, maybe more. 28. So now it feels much more uh, precise. So I can remember that this is 28 for mobile and then I can change it to 28. Of course, I can change also the font size. Font, font size for the focus state is 14 pixels. So I can copy this also into the mobile media query and then change it, I don't know, to 12 pixels maybe and publish it. And now it will become even smaller. You see, this is 12 pixels. I can see, um, I can see by selecting again the label. And then if I put some value here, remember it will, it will now go back down, right? So now I can, I can see that this is actually 12 pixels. Um, okay, so this is great, but what if I have more than one input, right? So what we are doing, Basically, let's duplicate this one and let's call it last name. And let's create another one and call it email. Let's tag them together so they won't, so, so they will be aligned to each other and everything work perfectly. Let's make everything centered. And now, um, as you can see, I don't have any class for any of these inputs. Um, our code is taking care of it. This is the first line, it's adding the class. So what we need to do is to, to select the different IDs. So this is input one, this is input two, and this is input three. So again, I suggest you to do it one by one. Okay, so input one, input two, and input, sorry, input three. And now I am expecting that everything will work exactly as it should be. Okay, so first one, second one, third one. Everything is work perfect. And now because I already added in the class for mobile, I, I need to align it. Oh my God, um, let's adjust all the item at once. We can do something like this and then make this one wider. And I think that I, I need to change the height. I don't remember what the height was. Um, never mind. Uh, I just want to show you that the values, now it's 12 pixels, right? So you remember everything. I just need to readjust the height for each input, but everything works exactly the same. Um, the last thing I want to show you is this method, okay? So you don't need to map each item individually, but this is more risky because it will take all the text inputs that you have in your, your page and maybe so for some of them you don't want to apply this effect so but i just want to show you that everything work exactly the same so as you can see right here so that's it very cute animation i will add the code to the uh, comments or um, or to the live example to this website um, so that's it so until next time.
keep building amazing sites on Wix Studio.